Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. We begin tonight with developing news out of North Fargo. Fire crews were called to an apartment building near the NDSU campus, finding a person dead as they beat back the flames. Heavy smoke was coming from the apartment at 802 14th Street North in Fargo, and now a fire and death investigation is underway. Valley News Team's Bradford Eric has been following this story for us all afternoon. He joins us live with the latest. Bradford? The cause and the identity of the person who died. Those are the two main questions that fire and police investigators have spent the better, better part of an afternoon trying to answer. What we do know is that at about 12.30 this afternoon, fire crews were called here at 802 14th Street North. Firefighters finding thick smoke from the apartment on the northeast corner. They pulled hoses, made entry, and as they were putting the fire out, they discovered someone had died. Crews were taking no chances either, making sure the flames hadn't spread or damaged any other units. But right now, it's neither a fire or police investigation. It's both agencies. We're going to start from, like we do with, with every uh, every fire, we'll look at where the origin was and then work our way out or, you know, and try to figure out what, what might have caused the fire and then, you know, whatever else goes along with the, with the rest of it. They understand that uh, a potential crime scene uh, has a lot of evidence and by using water or whatever extinguishing um, that they have might compromise whatever evidence is there. But uh, we understand that, that they have to put out the fire because we can't get in there and do our jobs. So, um, so we've worked hand in hand. We've uh, had uh, you know, trainings with each other to, just so that they understand what we're looking for. Please tell me there's no rush in this investigation and that eventually the body will be taken to Grand Forks to determine cause of death. I talked to one woman who lives in this apartment building. She tells me she didn't know the people who lived in that specific unit, but that she frequently sees people come and go from the building. As soon as we know more, we'll be bringing it to you. Live in Fargo, Bradford Eric, Valley News Live. Thank you, Bradford. We'll continue to follow this story as more information becomes available. Check for updates at valleynewslive.com. Bismarck was hit again this morning with more snow, making it day three for them. But it sounds like there might be some light snow at the end of the tunnel, or rather a light at the end of the tunnel for them. Hopefully no more snow. Here in Fargo, we saw some snow ourselves today. Let's head right over to Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson to find out how much we can expect. Hutch? Well, we've already had the shovel between one and two inches of snow across portions of the FM area. It's been that wet snow not accumulating too quickly on road surfaces. As temperatures stay elevated above that freezing mark, that's good. Here's a look at some of the snow reports on top of a photo shared by Amanda. This is near Beulah, North Dakota. Between one and two feet of snow between Bismarck and that Lake Sakakawea area. Hazen and Van Hook Park actually on the northern banks of Lake Sakakawea. There are 24 inches of white goodness, I guess. Here in the valley, we have had some snow, but not nearly what they saw out to the west. Here's another peak out to the Bismarck area. Santa having some troubles. Here's a look at your planner for tonight. Temperatures nearly steady in the mid 30s, drop into the low 30s, and we will have periods of light snow continuing into the overnight. Some haze, some fog, and Andrea, as temperatures fall, some roads and sidewalks could get a little slippery even here in the valley. Your updated forecast here in just a few minutes. Snowmobilers love it, right? And skiers? You still have to trailer it out to western North Dakota, but yeah. I'll tell you what, we'll have a shot at snow. I'll tell you all about it here in a second. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. And remember, our Valley News Live Storm Team weather app is always there for you. Get the latest forecasts, conditions, even follow the radar live. To download it for free, just search VNL Weather in the App Store. Pictures of a Fergus Falls bell ringer outside of a Walmart in the rain and snow from yesterday and today has numerous people asking why he was not allowed inside to ring, like at other stores. Several of them called our whistleblower hotline. As Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop tells us, it all comes down to a contract. Walmart and the Salvation Army have a national contract, and it requires bell ringers to be outside at least 15 feet. It's something that's been around for years. But to the people here in Fergus Falls, it seems new. In the past, it, has, it is the manager's prerogative if he wants to move them inside or not. He doesn't have to. 
you know, it was bad weather yesterday, and I understand that, but they're aware that they're going to be ringing outside. We never tell them any different. There are seven locations. The Salvation Army rings the bells in Fergus Falls. Five of them allows the ringers to stand in the entranceway, while Fleet Farm and Walmart require the ringers to be outdoors. McCormick says she understands people's concerns, but they should realize the businesses don't have to partner with them. And we have a good relationship with Walmart, so we want to make sure that people understand you don't always know the behind the scenes things that go on to make those collaborations happen. McCormick says the red kettle collection at Walmart brings in about $15,000 each year, and without that money, they couldn't give back to the community like they do. $15,000 is a lot of money for my budget, and to cut that out means we have to cut other things. Bert Kinsler has been ringing the bells at Fleet Farm for more than 25 years and says ringing them outside is part of the experience. No, we love it out here. You get more money that way. People feel sorry for you. <laughs> so you don't mind being outside? No, not at all. No, you dress warm. You know, we're, we're used to that. This is Minnesota. In Fergus Falls, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. If you're interested in bell ringing, there is a need in the Fergus Falls area and also here in Fargo Moorhead. You can learn more by clicking on this story at valleynewslive.com. North Dakota Governor Jack Dalrymple is clarifying his emergency evacuation order of the Dakota Access protest camps. Dalrymple ordered the evacuation of the camps on Monday, saying he was concerned about the people staying there during the winter. And that led to speculation by many that law enforcement would clear the camps or that other action would be taken. Today, the governor says he would not be clearing the camps, and the order was made to let protesters know they are in a dangerous situation and the state cannot guarantee emergency services. Dalrymple also further clarified the state's stance on assisting the Army Corps of Engineers if they asked the state to help clear the camps. I have said to the Corps directly that uh, they really need to take the lead uh, in what they do to clear their property uh, and what they do to evict people who are residing on their property, property illegally. And as Hutch said, temperatures will be getting colder next week with highs in the teens some, day, some days and also approaching zero at night. In light of the governor's emergency evacuation of protesters and Senator John Hoven addressing the pipeline today in Washington, there are a lot of eyes on what's going on in Morton County. Lieutenant Governor Drew Wrigley will join us live in studio to discuss the evacuation order and more relating to the Dakota Access Pipeline. So tune in tonight to Point of View with Chris Berg at 6.30 p.m. on KX4. Eric Preciado and his wife, Lisa Hassan of Devil's Lake, are facing, felony charge, facing a felony charge of child neglect after allegedly leaving two small children at home and going on a shopping trip to Walmart. A Class C felony charge of child neglect carries a maximum sentence of five years in prison. A maintenance man said he found a nine-month-old and a two-year-old alone in the apartment. Both children were taken into custody by social services. Reports came out today saying the pilot of a chartered plane that crashed into the mountains in Colombia told air traffic controllers he had run out of fuel. This is according to a leaked recording from the final minutes of the flight. The crash killed all but six of the 77 people on board, including most members of a Brazilian professional soccer team who were traveling to an important South American championship. Research shows cancer kills more than 7.5 million people every year. That's 67 times the population of Fargo. And it turns out you, your neighbors, and corporate America are lending a hand in that regard. In West Fargo today, the Family Fair Supermarkets and their parent organization, Spartan Nash, handed over a check to the Roger Maris Cancer Center. The check, for more than $19,000, comes from your donations at the checkout and fundraiser cookouts at the store during the 61 for 61 promotion. In addition to that, Spartan Nash kicked in some cash to add to the total. Though we're just getting our first bit of snow and cooler weather, North Dakota's 2016 spear fishing season officially opens tomorrow, December 1st. A reminder, you don't need a special license to spear fish. As long as you have a fishing license, you won't have to pay any more. They just ask that you register online. Doug Lear with North Dakota Game and Fish says now is a good time to do that because although the season opens, you will not actually be able to spearfish tomorrow. 
there is no place that we have safe ice. And in fact, even in western North Dakota where we had all that snow, that's about as bad as we could have asked for in, in creating ice. So right now is not the time to actually get out there. Right now is the time to start taking care of some of the administrative details. There's going to be plenty of time to put the decoy in the water, to get the spear ready to go. The rules are a little different than traditional fishing. You're only allowed to spear northern pike and non-game fish. The season runs through March 15th. And because there is still so much open water, the Minnesota DNR is urging boaters to take extra precautions now that the temperatures are dipping. The cold water will rob your body heat 25 times faster than the air does, according to DNR officers. So even if you typically don't wear a life jacket, you may want to now. If you fall in, cold water shock or muscle cramps could make it hard to swim. Another good idea is to not hunt or fish in a boat alone. Today is Natalie Schre uh, Schreyer's birthday. She turned 11 years old, and she's obviously learned some very important lessons in her relatively short life. She spent the early morning hours of her 11th year at Fraser Limited. Instead of getting gifts to mark this special occasion, she's giving gifts to Fraser. That happened because Natalie asked her birthday guests to, instead of gifting her, bring gifts for someone in need. Um, I decided to give to a charity for my birthday because I have a lot of stuff at home and I wanted to help other people that might not have as much as I do. Natalie's mom and dad also got into the act. They heard Fraser needed a freezer, so they bought one for them. Fraser Limited works with children, youth, and adults, some of whom may have some special needs. Some good news for Netflix fans. A new option was unveiled today that will make your air travel or road trip more enjoyable. That's still ahead tonight. And temperatures in the 30s for most of the day. A soupy gray day with flakes here in the FM area. It does look like we'll continue to see gray skies. And another shot at the wintry weather system working its way through the region. I'll tell you about it right after this.